Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I'm going to test out the Orion Carrier Plane from my To Mars and Beyond series on a path from Tampico to the Bahamas. I previously released a video where I placed my launch site in Tampico and the landing site in the Bahamas using Kerbal Constructs and we need to test this first stage out on that path as it is a fly forward booster. It is a first stage that lands downrange, not back at the launch site. And then uh, ideally we would place uh, jet engines on it using methane because it's a methane oxygen stage and those jet engines would burn the methane in order to fly it back from the landing site back to the launch site. So it would just fly itself like that. Uh, to some extent we've tested that out before though um, some refinements could be made. I haven't fitted the jet engines here just to see whether it can do this without the jet engines. Of course, it's much more trivial to land it downrange if it has the jet engines than if it doesn't. So this is the more difficult situation. And I've made it even more difficult because I've put on it uh, one of the heavier payloads from my To Mars and Beyond series. And the reason we're doing this in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 is because that series is in 1.8.1. I do intend to test it in 1.12 as well. I've also uh, brought the Kerbal Constructs placements into 1.12, so that is something we will do later on. But since the series is in 1.8.1, I need to do that there first. So this is one of the heavier upper stages that we have with Hydrolox. Its balloon tank is like highly optimized as much as we can get to high orbits and the payload is actually a Mars payload. It's small, uh, the fairings are a set size and they are meant for the nuclear thermal propulsion tanks and so it's small compared to the size that we needed because it's going all the way out to Mars. So anyway, but yeah, it's generally a heavier payload and that will mean that maybe we can't get there. The thing is, the distance between Tampico and the Bahamas is a longer distance than the distance between our former sites, uh, Brownsville to Cape Canaveral. One of the problems with the Brownsville Cape Canaveral launch was that it would actually cross Florida on the way down. So that was a little bit dicey. And so this seems to be a little bit better. Also, the heading between Tampico and the Bahamas is only 82 degrees whereas the heading between Brownsville and Cape Canaveral was 75, so more energy was sort of lost with the former version. Also, we're closer to the equator, so that's also easier for the payload. So slight optimizations. I mean, it's not going to be a huge thing, but it does require the Orion carrier plane to fly a longer distance. So we're going to see if we can do that with the heavier payload that we have right now. And without further ado, let's take it outside. This is the Orion carrier plane with the custom wings and custom vertical stabilizer, of course. I initially used procedural wings to shape it up, but these are all FAR compatible regular wings, modeled and everything. Okay, so this should be Tampico. Yep, we can tell by the little channel there and everything. This is our our new site. I'll put extra buildings. I Somebody had asked about cities. I had made a video about adding cities to Kerbal Space Program and I would like to populate this area a little bit more. Is that runway a little bit floaty? Um, maybe a little bit, but not too bad. Uh, but yeah, we could do stuff around here. We could make this look a lot better. Uh, that I'll fix up the little coastal interface later on. This was uh, Quicker job just to see whether it was a good idea, whether it's feasible or not. So later on I can touch up the model as necessary in Blender. But for now this will work. Let's do the practical tests first. And boy our Delta V reading is just not going to tell me anything. So here we go. SAS on. Throttle is up. Ignition. And launch. So there are a lot of variables here, like the angle at which we want to re-enter. That could be a variable. And also what uh, apps is we aim for. Uh, let's go 180 roll. Okay. So I think a heading of 82 is correct. We really want to 
go to the northern end of the island so that we don't actually fly over Bermuda and we can just fly into, not Bermuda, but the Bahamas and fly to the runway. Bermuda was actually another th thing. I contemplated Cape Canaveral to Bermuda and that might still happen. In 1.12 we won't have the coastline flickering, that's another nice thing. The lower the apoapsis we aim for, the less the g-forces on the way back down. But also the less distance that we'll cover. So there's a lot of trade-offs involved in this business. You want the lower g-forces, but you also want to cover as much ground as possible and impart as much velocity to the payload as possible. Okay, switching some engines off and rolling, per usual. Our baseline expectation is to get to an orbital velocity of 4,000 meters per second before decoupling the payload. Which again is the second stage as well, so that it completes orbit. Okay, well we certainly have enough for 4,000. Probably a little bit extra in fact. Maybe this wasn't the heaviest thing we could... Maybe we should have put one of the NTB tanks in the payload. Okay. And... Well, that's a little bit extra. Alright. Separation. Okay, and we want to hold a 30 degree pitch on the way down. So, just as a note, we have an apoapsis of 177 kilometers. And we have probably way more delta V left over than we would like. Now in 1.12 we won't, right? Because 1.12 has residuals. <laughs> so we won't have this much. But right now we have a bit more. So if you fall short, we could use the engines a little bit more to boost ourselves forward. I remember somebody suggesting that for the 1.12 situation. Um, it looks like 82 degrees actually has us going too far south. So we, that, the heading might need to be a little bit higher than that. Um, so 80 degrees, maybe 78 degrees actually. So that isn't as beneficial as I thought it was. Right now you can see it's showing us basically splashing down off of Havana there. But we are going to sort of skip up again. And I mean, if it was just a matter of seeing this trajectory here and assuming you would land right there, that would be easy. But it's the skip that's the tricky part. Also, and the skip determines, I mean, the skip is partly determined by our pitch right here. Holding too high a pitch and the thing will go out of control. Holding too low a pitch, it'll go out of control. So we don't have too many degrees to work with around 30. But we could probably pitch to 40 degrees and it'd still be fine. Okay, here we go. Goes from 1G's. And it will build hopefully to not too many G's. <laughs> there goes the payload. We didn't follow it. Uh, 8 G's it looks like. Uh, no, it's going up again. The 11 G's. Okay. Still quite doable. I mean, there are certainly fighters that are designed to be able to take 11 G's. I mean, normally it'd be like 9 G's, but they have tolerance for that. So we could certainly say that that's acceptable, considering this is going to be uncrewed despite the windows. This is an uncrewed first stage, automated. That's okay for now. We'll see how much we glide. But yeah, next launch we need to get a little bit closer up there. At least we didn't directly overfly Cuba, you know. I don't think they'll be thrilled by that. Well, there's Florida over there. And, you know, Cuba over here. Hopefully we are safely over international waters or whatever. If you're thinking maybe I should turn to the north here, that's really not safe until we're below Mach 3. We just have to go along with it until then. You can see the large angle of attack side slip thing. 
we take a look at our controls, look at the pitch being maxed out. I can't really hold 30 degree pitch anymore. We can just tone that down a bit. Okay, we should get a little bit of a bounce here too. Mach 5 at this altitude is a bit harsh, but again, doable. So that's a second bounce. Well, we'll see where we end up. We do have some Delta V here. I think I should try a heavier payload. That that little Mars bit in the fairing might not have been the heaviest thing. I looked at the stage itself and go, well, that was a highly optimized stage. I definitely made that as big as I could. But perhaps the payload inside the fairing could be larger just to push the limits here. So our forward carry seems to be, okay, we'll still get more lift and that's going to extend for a bit. Our position is not great. I think I can take it manual now. And start to turn it. But we have to be careful. Using atmospheric autopilot here. And we're coming on precisely the wrong side of the island. <laughs> I wanted to be on the northern end to avoid overflying all this. Now the reason why we don't use it as a flyback booster is you can see how the speed bleeds off as we turn. So you can't really carry the speed back with you. You, know, you might think, okay, well, we're going forward. We can just turn around and go back. No, it loses speed when you turn. And especially as it bounces up from the atmosphere, you can't really turn until you've bled off most of the speed anyway. Fast things don't really like to turn. Yeah, it might have worked if we didn't have to turn, but I think we need more speed now. Okay, RCS needs to sell that fuel down, amazingly enough. Okay. Pull up a bit. Well, certainly the best way to dump fuel. I'm also interested to see at what distance the photo scenery appears. Obviously, it's not appearing yet. I said to 100 kilometers, but I don't know if it's actually going to obey that or not. Okay, it has just appeared. So, well, whatever distance that is. Uh, I don't know off the top of my head how big the island is, but it might have been 100 kilometers. So maybe it's working about right on that. I think Kerbal Constructs doesn't like things appearing too much more than 100 kilometers anyway, so we can't set it too high. Okay, well, we have to manage our energy carefully, but we are turning towards the runway. So again, jet engines would be more mass, but because of their efficiency, they're generally worth it as far as the ground that they can help cover. So fitting extra jet engines on would only help as far as reaching the runway, as far as I can tell. Ah, uh, the air brakes aren't working. That happens sometimes. Oh, 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 oh no, oh no, oh no, I got it out of whack. Ah, uh, I keep doing that too. Um, I just stalled it basically. Oh, shoot. That was an angle attack thing. Well, okay. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, we'll revert and we'll go for a better heading towards the target and I'll be more careful. All right, I think we can just, um, we could carry more payload, I think. Let me go back to vehicle assembly and put one of the NTP tanks in instead of the little Mars payload. Okay, so here we go again. This time we'll head to 78 degrees, I think. 
That first SAS on, throttle up, ignition, and launch. Uh, I didn't really want to start the RCS on the NTP tank there. So more payload. 78. Try to match the trajectory that we had last time. Okay, well, a little bit higher than last time it looks like. Uh, about the right amount of juice. Which means we can't burn forward though. Okay, separation. Last time we burned forward a bit to cover some extra ground. This time, not so much capability of that. But we're lined up better. So there's that part. Okay, here we go. Yep, it's past that 11 mark, you see. Even past 12 there. Or at least on that scale. Okay, and we're going back up. And this is where we are. We'll see where we end up. Okay, coming back down from the bounce. And we're we're over to Florida Keys. I hope that's alright. Well, last time I got in trouble for trying to bleed off speed drastically, but I'm gonna try and add speed again. Right now. Selling the fuel down, if I can, here. Well, the fuel's not getting settled down right now. I also thought I had more than one thruster to help out with that, instead of just the one at the top, I don't know. Are we missing some? Oh, there is settled now. Okay, that'll do. If nothing else, I just wanted to make it lighter. I don't know if I'm gonna make it this time. This seems like a bit of a stretch. Yeah, I can't get to the runway. I think I can get to land though, so I'll just try and land it since we didn't do that successfully last time. And I'm gonna readjust a little bit more. Uh, clearly with the payload that we had right there, that might just be a little bit too much. So I'll underfuel the NTP tank and see if we can just uh, get a good number like that. I really want to get it to that runway. I placed it for a reason. I didn't place it on this side. Obviously this side would be more convenient, but it turns out that this western side is a national park, so we can't really do that. The eastern side where I put the runway is not a national park as far as I know, so... Um, but, but I might be wrong about that, but I definitely saw a national park on this side, so we definitely cannot put it on this side. Okay. Trying to come down gently here. The terrain is flat. I mean, of course, I just kept, kept it a very simple model, so there's no no fancy undulations, nothing like that. I really don't like that little bit of supposed water, though. Let's get a little bit beyond that. It'd still be treated like land. It's not Kerbal water or anything. Okay, this will be fine. And are we down? Yeah, we are down. Well, that's the gentlest landing I've ever done with this. Oh, there are bounces apparently. Oh, we lost a body flap. I did not expect any bounces here. It really is completely flat. So I don't know why it did that. Oh well. 
Okay, one more time. Hopefully third time's the charm. It's possible we should just burn a little bit further initially. Uh, after we let go of the payload, use the Delta V then, but let's just first uh, underfuel this just a bit. So let's see our mass here. Oh, that includes the launch pad, of course. Two tons. Let's see. Well, that's 4.5 tons-ish. Let's try that. Okay, here we go with the slightly lesser payload. Throttle up, SAS on, ignition, and launch. And we still don't want that RCS on. Okay, so I don't think we can go any further north. We're already sort of going over to Florida Keys, so we'll keep it to 78. Even though we're hitting the island a little bit further south than I wanted. Guess that will have to do. So, our Tampico terrain, also in need of a lot of uh, assistance as far as perhaps some buildings and such. It has another airport over there, a civilian airport if you will. Well, I mean it's all civilian, but uh, you get what I mean. Not space airport. Okay, shutting down some engines and rolling. Let's see how much we can do. I mean, it'll help the payload in the end. Let's say... 4,100. And separate. Four thousand one hundred gets us all the way to the Florida Keys on the first arc. And the payload gets destroyed. <laughs> Always an elegant reminder that we have to do this properly, otherwise we would get destroyed too. A little bit less than 12 Gs, I think, there. And up it goes again. Let's see how much we are using on the pitch authority. So... You can see that arc forming now. Sure looks better than before. Yeah, I don't think we're getting the fuel settled until we get below Mach 1, unfortunately. I'm trying, but it doesn't seem like that works out. I would like to dump some of the propellant by burning it. Okay, ignition. Well, uh, I didn't go all the way to exhaustion on the fuel, but that's about as close to it as we're going to get. Well, I do believe I can make it this time. Still got a ways to go here, though. Okay. Well, we have the energy, I think. Just need to use it properly this time. I'm going to bring the gear down early and sort of make sure I can use the brakes up. Ah, nope, they're not popping out. And brakes still deploy. Okay, that's good. I wish I had turned off the gimbling on those engines. Okay. Uh, oh, no, not, not the body flap. Not the body flap. Gosh. Oh, oh gosh, it's stalling. Ah, I was so close. I was so close. Well, that was just, it's stalling in the weirdest way possible. <laughs> oh, it all blew up, so. It, it, <laughs> okay, that was just my mistake. We got it to the runway, it just isn't in all one piece. I need more practice flying this darn thing. Okay, I didn't get the stall speed right, but we sort of made it. Okay, anyway, uh, that's enough testing for me today. 
Uh, we, we can get here. We sort of know the speed we need to go. Uh, I think it might be limiting the payload a little bit, but we'll see what we can do about getting it to orbit. And yeah, I'll continue working on it. I want to see how it works in 1.12. That's another thing. And that might be next. But for now, I have uh, done enough testing. I get the idea. It can make it to the runway. We just need to do it properly. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.